Hey guys, uh, another quick one for you today. Um, this is a 2.1 stereo amplifier. This is an AliExpress job, or possibly a Wish one, I can't remember. Um, it was brought to act as a slave amplifier for our truck, and it turns out it's um, kind of garbage. Um, so what we're going to do is, I'm going to do a non-destructive teardown on it, because I might still use this, because I've got a set of really nice Altec Lansing um, speakers the kind that came with the Dell's tiny time sort of computers and the onboard amp is dying and this might be enough to resurrect them so and with this I could just bolt it up onto the side so let's have a look inside I am expecting a single chip uh, amplifier solution um, not really expecting a lot from it um, there are a lot of these modules kicking around on the various Chinese websites so they'll all be the same so bear with me let's grab some screwdrivers and let's get into it so yeah i these are pretty much all of a muchness i can almost visually picture the board that will be inside this um i will pop a image up there of what i think is going to be in here and we'll find out whether i'm right or wrong the screws used to put this together are horrible so they're not quite one size and not quite another. There we go, that's much better fit on that screwdriver. So the original idea for this was to use this as an extension amplifier. Our truck has rear speakers that are connected in to the stereo and the idea was that we would put a switch box in um, that can switch between this and the uh, for want of a better word the cab stereo and then we could switch between um, the output of the laptop or the output of the radios and uh, the output of the stereo and, and for some reason sometimes you may actually want uh, your radios up there's a tiny little screw there I don't think that's come from this but yeah this wasn't suitable for what we wanted to do uh, nothing against these I have another one of these um, in a perspex case with built-in Bluetooth which is actually what I use up here and it's actually a really nice little unit I can see already that that's a really cheap PCB in there now I'm hoping that if I undo the front, everything's just going to slide out because I'm really not wanting to uh, start pulling knobs off and uh, loosening nuts, so to speak. There we go. Incidentally, I've had some concerns about audio on these videos, so uh, let me know if you think the audio has been too low. There's uh, some more in the back. Well, they do go into captive nuts on the board. I'm wondering if that's for heat sinking. I, the chips that I suspect they've used in here, I wouldn't expect them to be uh, heat sink. We don't actually have a, any specs of this here. No. Um, this is the standard, uh, absolutely unrealistic claims to um, output power on this. So now can we slide out? Pretty please. Oh, no, this is not what I thought it was going to be at all. Okay. So, so much for this being a um, off-the-shelf amp. Well, it could still be an off-the-shelf amp. Uh, module but it's not what I thought it was so a lot of them are using I think it's the class D amplifier chips the SMT ones and this looks like it's actually a genuine Philips uh, device in here it's claiming to be a TDA 7057 uh, any of you of a certain age that have uh, been into electronics will uh, recognize them there's also a website there let me just see if I can get that to focus for you so I'm guessing underneath we have our two amp ICs with lots, well, I wouldn't say lots of thermal griefs, but a fair amount. They're surface mounted. I'm not sure they're designed to be mounted that way at all. You can see there's little sticky pads under them. Um, and we're using two. So I'm guessing they're stereo amps. 
so maybe without looking at the amp data sheet I would guess we're using left and right here and if we look so we've got our positive output here then we've got a ground a ground sorry yeah sorry positive output here a ground negative output negative output ground positive output so what we're doing here on the sub is our positive comes from the same as the positive pin here which means I'd expect that to perhaps come from the where are we one two three okay that's great that's not quite what I expected one two three four one two three four one two three Four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, I was kind of expecting them to have bridged this, um, but it looks like they're not. They're just using half the chip, but they are two different chips. So that's maybe why we've got two different numbers here. Um, TDA seven oh five seven AQ, TDA uh, TA seven oh seven two oh seventy P. So yeah. Um, I guess that's what we're doing. We'll have a look at the, for the data sheet in a minute and I'll pop that up. Um, we have some JRC op-ampy op goodness in here. So we've got two op-amps. These are going to be involved in the level control, I thought. We've got an auxiliary input on the front. Um, where are we wired into on those? I deeply apologise if you did hear that noise. Um, that is one of the lesser known uh, qualities of the uh, giant Alaskan Malamute breed. Um, if I do pass out live on video now, then it's the dog's fault. Anyway, where were we? So we were trying to see what we're wired into here. So the base volume is using that uh, JRC4558 as a level control or possibly a preamp for the base. I suspect the same sort of things going on here and then just passive uh, tone control. Um, yeah, and the build quality is not, by Chinese stand standards, the build quality is not shocking. It's actually not that bad at all. Solder joints are all good. I don't see any signs of fractured ones. I don't like this. I'd like to have seen this done better. Um, these amps can get incredibly hot under high power conditions and fault conditions and I think I'd be happy with them through hole happier with them through hole we've got a slightly crappy joint up there but that is this steel plate so we're not worried about it um, the caps being laid down like this I think the board has possibly been designed for something else um, and it's been adapted to fit in this case so we've had to lay these caps down uh, 16 volts 2200 microfarads 25 volts 470 you could probably get that one smaller and small enough to fit in there and that one maybe not so and we are looking at who makes these caps because i have vague misgivings about the green ones because i've seen a lot of those fail take on okay i've seen them before i've not seen them fail uh, the blue one is jun fu oh here we go uh, OST for that black one and TR for all the other ones. So this is a real, uh, we've got different, you've got at least one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different brands of caps on here. I'd suspect it's probably not going to take a lot of abuse. We've actually got a reverse current diode in there, a uh, reverse protection diode in there. How have they done that? So that diode will shunt the power supply out if it's connected wrong, which is um, the preferable way of doing things. If you um, do it so that the diode is in line with the positive supply, you get a voltage drop over um, the diode. And obviously your power consumption is dependent on your volume, so that voltage drop can get worse depending on how far you've got this cranked up. So, yeah, that's quite a deep scar across it. I don't know, it's not, it's just thermal compound so yeah that's not what i expected it's not as bad as i expected um we'll go look those chips up and i might do a bit of um speech to monitor because uh, <laughs> i ain't doing speech to camera um um 
see what they are. But that's actually not that bad. I think just solely because it didn't fit what we wanted to do with it. Um, there was no actual problem with it. So that may be going into rescuing my speakers. I am half tempted to try and get some more thermal gunge in there. Anyway, there you go. Torn down. Take care.